grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In South Africa here, we are in level four lockdown again. Since the 28th of June, that's this last Monday, this Monday that's just passed, we have been in this level four lockdown. And so today I come to you again in an online service, joining you in your homes or your car or at work or wherever you may be. Again, this church building is empty of people, but I know that this word will reach you where you are. Again, we cannot uh, go to restaurants, we cannot buy alcohol, it's maybe not the worst thing in the world, it's nice to have sometimes, but more than that, we are restricted from social visits, we're restricted from fellowshipping with each other. In our old age homes and frail cares, the elderly are in stricter lockdowns. I know that one of the older homes in the area, possibly both, they're not allowed to receive visits from their family. So many already in South Africa are suffering because of this COVID thing, and it's not something the government has done to us. It's just something that we are all facing in common as brothers and sisters in South Africa, as brothers and sisters in Christ. And it has affected us all. It's changed the way we greet each other. It's changed the way we go to the shops. It's difficult to recognize people with their masks on. We have to sanitize our hands all the time. We have to wash our hands and, and stay away. Now, the smallest sniff or cough means we have to be careful and stay away from other people, disrupting work. And then there are many, many, many who have lost their work. Many who don't know where this is going. There are many in South Africa who don't know where their children's next meal or bed is going to be. People are suffering. And at the moment, we don't know when that will come to an end. Or how we will come through this, get through this. And for many, this can be overwhelming and can seem like a very dark time. I know I've felt that from time to time, despair, thinking about the situation and what it's done to our church, even during uh, times where we could have services again, our attendance wasn't nearly as what it was before. People stay away because they are afraid or perhaps because it's become easy. It's very easy to fall into despair. But we must remember one thing. That we have a hope that cannot be extinguished. Our God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, our one God, is the victor of the world. And he has overcome the world. He hasn't just overcome it. He has a plan, and nothing can hinder that. This is like nothing to him. He has faced catastrophes with his people. He has been through pandemics with his people, his church. He has helped them face famines and disease, starvation and death. He has been with his people when they were isolated, alone, far away from home. He has been with his people when they have turned away from him. When they've done shameful things or allowed their hearts and minds to fall into the darkest thoughts and actions. He has been through this all with his church. And nothing can stop him from working out his plan for salvation. And Jesus promised that he would come again. But he also gave us hope. He has given us a treasure to keep within us. The knowledge that God is love, that he loves us, and that he's with us and that he wants what is good for us. 
And if we follow him, we will experience that blessing in his life. Even though hardship might come, we can experience his peace. But more than that, we get to be light in this world. We get to make a difference. We don't have to be overcome by the darkness that surrounds us. Because we know that our Lord and God, our Savior, our Father is with us. And he sent us. He sent us with this message of love and forgiveness, of mercy and kindness. A message that brings healing to people. And wholeness and goodness and hope in their own lives. Sometimes it can feel as if this darkness is overpowering and has the upper hand. As if a, a dark shadow suppresses a fire from flame into a glow until finally there's nothing left. That's what it can feel like. But the opposite is true. We are too often afraid to trust this, that God has given us the message. God has given us a treasure that is light. The message of his love and his mercy through his son, Jesus Christ. And we need to share this. He wants us to trust him that he sends us with his Holy Spirit, with the command and the authority to drive out darkness of despair and hopelessness and to preach repentance and hope and new beginnings for people, not with a judgmental finger, but with honesty and mercy. The same mercy that we receive. You see, the people, God's people in a, a town called Thessalonica, a long, long time ago, they were new Christians. An, an apostle or disciple called Paul had come there and he had told them about Jesus Christ, the same message that we have, and had set them free. It's, it helped them. They, suddenly they realized that they're worth something. Women were no longer property. Slaves became brothers with the owners. People had hoped, had hope now. They were part of a brotherhood and sisterhood, a community of believers who were brought together before God because they were all weak and needed God's help. They were all filled with sin and selfishness, and they realized that they needed God's forgiveness. Because without God, without his help and his mercy, without his love, there was no hope for them. They had moved from life, a life of despair, a life of hardship and cruelty, and they had found, been given in Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters who support them and love them and care for them. And yet they were being persecuted for what they believed in. Some of them had been put to death. Some of them had lost their freedom, respect. And so Paul writes to them in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 1 to 11. He speaks to them and gives them encouragement by telling them about Jesus, that he will come again, but also about being a light now. Now, brothers, about times and dates we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons and daughters of the light and sons and daughters of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not disappoint, did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another, build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. And so Paul encourages his people, you know what? Don't be overwhelmed by these things. Jesus is coming again. He is coming. And you know these things. You have been given this light, this message of Jesus Christ, and therefore belong to the day. Let us be self-controlled. 
Put on faith and love. Don't be overcome by doubt when you look at everything around you. Believe that Jesus Christ is with you and that he will come. We have a hope that no one can extinguish. Put on love for the people that make your life difficult. Put on love for the people around you who are suffering. Put on God's love and never, ever, ever give up the hope of salvation. That is, yes, one day when Jesus comes again, but also the salvation that comes with knowing Jesus Christ right now and becoming like him every day. See, Jesus died for us so that we can be free, so that we can be filled with hope and joy and be a people that love, are faithful and good. And so I challenge you to stand up again, to stand up in your hopelessness and your despair, to put on faith and to trust in the living God, to trust in Jesus Christ who walks with you, who has overcome the world, and this is nothing for him. Stand up because you've been given an amazing treasure to share with other people that will bring them hope and light in their life. And that is the message that God loves them, that he died for them that he wants a loving and intimate relationship with them. He wants them to be his child as well. He wants them to be his son, his daughter, and he wants to give them freedom from guilt through forgiveness. He wants them to know that there is nothing in their lives that is too far gone for him. His grace is bigger than what they could ever have done. This is a message that you've been given, and so I challenge you, stand up. Stand up and share it with confidence, faith, love, and the hope of salvation. Keep your eyes up. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.